So how else would you follow up the feel-good movie of your life but with a direct sequel where they finally kill Duke Lillard? Ha! Well, there's a lot of better ways, like an unrelated sequel with time travel! Besides, they apparently killed Duke Lillard in the extended Lord of the Rings cut of the first film, so just watch that. And you still won't have seen it, because you'll have fallen asleep by then. The Name of the King 2 was a project the lead, Dolph Lundgren, was very excited to be a part of, which is why he immediately turned the role down. But then he needed some money shortly after, so he said, ah, fuck it. Ileana the Powerful, Sorceress, running for her life through a forest she's never seen. We start off with Lundgren pointlessly narrating over the scene he couldn't possibly know anything about as he's not a part of it nor ever told about it. And the big twist of it is that she's really in Vancouver! Or that she's in the precise time of present day, one or the other. Then we see Lundgren playing an ex-soldier named Soldier. My name is Granger. Well, fuck my donkey, they thought of an actual name for him, and he's beating up cops in front of kids and making them pay for the privilege. Come on, don't be shy. That's good, some of the kids can't afford their own uniforms. Cause the kids feel really silly watching me beat you guys up in their street clothes. Don't you do anything else with them? Uh, yeah, sure, watch. Take your position. That's good, alright. We'll see you next week, okay? Have a good night now. Tough class for sure, and while Lundgren said the money is for uniforms, well look at this king paper towel over here. Yeah, we know where all the money really went. And just when he's ready to take his fully clothed bath, he gets attacked by hoodies and is saved by Miss Opening Scene. <laughs> Where the hell are you people coming from? Wait, was she gonna leave without him first? Did she forget why she was there? And apparently there's no need to actually go in a portal, just reaching towards it is good enough. Phelous, it is I, you, me. We're the same person. I've come from the time beyond to tell you don't finish this review. Wow, how far from the time beyond? Well, the end of this video. Why are you dressed like that, then? I just felt like it. Okay, I thought I'd known better, but yeah, why shouldn't I finish this review? Because it'll go online and people will watch it. You know, the usual. You are just amazingly useless, aren't you? And remember, you have to go back in time at the end of this video or none of this will ever happen! Note to self, don't go back in time. Ileana the Powerful, Sorceress. My kill! You gotta be kidding me. Needless to say, Lundgren is not gonna take this kill-stealing line down in attacks before knowing which side they're actually on, but he didn't count on Mick's smirky beard and his ultimate move, the lazy kick. <laughs> oh, and look, we got a rain again. Is this a thing now with Uva Bowl? If he has Kristana Loken in the first movie, make sure to follow up with Natasha Malfi in the direct video sequel. The King Sorcerer. Yeah, everyone with you would know who she was, so thanks for telling us who Miss I Open a Portal and Die was. But since she was such a powerful sorceress, it means she can become a ghost, I guess. Hey, I was running through the woods earlier. Make sure to tell people. Okay. Oh, but I kid, he never finds that out. She actually gives him some really useful information. Remember where you're meant to be. Remember that you must return to this place. It is your destiny to be here. And by useful information, I of course mean needlessly cryptic garbage when she could in fact be telling him some really useful info so he doesn't get tricked. Wait, was that the actor putting his wig on? 
Is it supposed to be a wig in the film because it's never shown that way again? Or did they just include that shot because it looks so fucking stupid? But hey, at least that crown really completes the look. Now he's truly ready for the nearest Burger King. That's not cool. Indeed. It is warm. Why, yes, this is the main payoff to Dolph being a time traveler in this film. Him using modern lingo and people not getting it. And don't worry, if you didn't find it funny here, it's in about every scene he's in. The blood of the chosen one. So, what do people call you in your time? Granger. Granger. That is the most unusual name. I'd be surprised how many times to get me laid. The name got him laid? Yeah, I can really see that. Granger. Oh, Granger! Laid. What? What is laid? Get it? It's like that joke from five seconds ago. Now what's your name? Insolence! I was once known as Raven. So his real name completely disappeared when he became the king, or he legally changed his name to first name, the last name king? Seems like someone is overcompensating for something. My guess is that dollar store crown. Anyway, Burger King tells Lundgren he's the chosen one, and he's gotta save the world from the evil ones, and blah 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 blah, we get it. Why have I been brought here? Okay, maybe not all of us. I do not share my king's devotion to the prophecy, yet I pledge to honor the crown. That is why you have not been hung by the town gallows. Hang him? For what? Coming from the future? You know, Smirky McBeard, I get the feeling you're not a person who should have any kind of authority. I began my day with a protein shake, and now I'm standing in a medieval sleeping hut. You know, Lundgren in this film is starting to remind me of someone. I began my day with a sugar crisp. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Acid trips don't get this weird. Or maybe they do. I wouldn't know. Who am I talking to? I wouldn't know. All I know is I can't get enough of that sugar crisp. No water purification to speak of. Jeez, there's gotta be everything from E. coli to dead sheep floating around in this stuff. So it keeps me going strong. <coughs> On guard. Oops, I somehow missed you right there in plain sight. It is my honor to share your bed. Can't get enough of that hooker crisp. Actually, Lundgren has a headache from his earlier sugar high, so he says let's just be bed buddies, in the literal sense. I'm tired and I need to sleep, okay? I will keep your bed with you for warmth. For warmth? Okay. Besides, I got a tough round of golf in the morning, followed by croquet. Why, yes, he does wear that the whole film. But I'm not going to because it's too hot. <laughs> There is to be a fountain of blood in your days ahead. You must sleep any longer. Danger's at hand. What do you mean? It is your fear that weakens you. Awaken now! Abolish it! My wound is fatal. Oh no, considering you just tried to kill me in my sleep, I feel so bad. Going back just a second, the other woman in Lundgren's sleep cutting in with the cryptic nonsense is someone he hasn't met yet, and when he does meet her, there's absolutely no acknowledgement of him seeing her here. In fact, she even spits out some of the very same lines. It is your fear that weakens you. It is your fear that weakens you. It just seems like part of the later scene was cut in randomly. It is your fear that weakens you. And I don't know why. Next, Dolph gets treated to Burger King's wonderful outdoor throne room. <laughs> Nothing but the best for this dippity doo da king, huh? I'm sick everybody riffing about that prophecy. You can take the prophecy and shove it up your ass. Hmm, that seems a little familiar. Never have I been spoken to in such a manner. Yeah, you're really imposing, Shorty King. Go back to ruling your alleyway. Oh, what am I saying? This isn't at all like a back alley. Anyway, time to get drunk. Sorry, Dolph, I forgot the paper bags. A previous king, a commoner who rose to the throne, was a great man. Fortunately, he's dead, because Jason Statham sure shit wasn't coming back. 
Anyway, he tells him that the Holy Mother is the main bad guy. You know, something that truly couldn't have been a part of his first speech. But you know, as I see Burger King talking here, all I can think of is him sitting on his throne when it's raining and him saying, Well, I'm still king. Sugar Bear says, yeah, sure, he's up for the job of killing Granny Goodwitch, but he wants to work alone because he doesn't know the land or what he's actually up against. You should not be alone in your quest, dear Granger. That's what I was afraid of. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-T. Meanwhile, Medieval Rain is apparently a medieval junkie and trying to get into Lundgren sugar pills. Well, let's face it, it's not like we have a trauma team for standby to stitch an arm back on. In the time beyond, you can reaffix a man's arm. This information pleases me. Did she get even worse than in Blood Rain 3? That's impressive. And talk of modern day medicine apparently really gets medieval rain in the mood, so they have some fully clothed scarf sex, cause Lundgren insists on never taking it off. Also, apparently being woken up by attempted murder and then having to have a talk with King Dork woke Lundgren up enough for sex now. And you know, why bother getting any sleep before going off to battle the next day when you can be woken up yet again to be told the same thing again? You must slay the Dark Mother. Dolph finally gets through the night of endless interruptions, proving he is the chosen one for reals, I guess, and then they get attacked by Darth Maul and friends. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Only the Holy Mother. Only the Holy Mother. <laughs> you maniac! Desist! And the King's decree desist! This is the idiot! Just stabbed the best way of getting into their camp! <laughs> I'm glad we can get any information out of him, I guess. <laughs> then we cut to the king for this very important single line. It is to be. The whole point of this is just to show that Burger King does alchemy so it's not completely out of nowhere when it becomes a plot point that he's an alchemist. Glad they thought of such a smooth way to integrate that. That's an impressive field dresser. In the time beyond. Would you have the knowledge to save this man from his wound? All he needs is a little bit of that sugar crisp. Ah! Crispality! Yeah, look, my anger has left me since our fight. I acted in haste. Look, I grabbed you first. Pray you forgive my actions. Wow, that was a good feud between those two. It's almost like there was no payoff to it. They brought 18 men. Does that seem strange to you? that they exactly matched us in numbers. They followed us to this point. Well, we have a spy. Da 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 da! They don't. I have told no one of your plans. Yeah, you really haven't told anyone anything for that matter, and then she dies. Uh... But then we learn her killer was Burger King! Uh... Was this really the way to reveal that Burger King was evil, having him kill some character we don't really know or care about? And why did Burger King even want her dead? Don't worry, that answer is coming, never. And now that slightly more time has passed, McSmirky Beard has gone from wanting to hang Lundgren to being all right with him to now wanting to die for him. You have to go over and down, it's the only chance. There's no time for all of us to descend. I'm not leaving you here. I shall never forget you, Granger. Oh shit, I broke my neck on the way down! Well, fuck! I must follow him. <sighs> you probably could just roll down the hill, Bland Rain. You really didn't need to follow the way he went down. So McSmirky Beard dies for the man he hated to death just a few hours ago. Now that Bland Rain and Sugar Bear are safely all the way down a hill, there's absolutely no rush as they can't possibly follow them all the way down there. And then, oh come on, don't make the hill even smaller just slightly down the stream. You'll never get me on top of this couch! Really? Damn it. It's almost like someone wanted everyone to be branded idiots. Ha ha ha, brilliant. Then to make sure she's not in the next scene, Bland Rain sprains her ankle, followed by her absolute best line in the film at her absolute blandest level. Sons of whores. I have failed you. 
Sons of Whores, just like me with this review. Sons of Whores, I have failed you. This spot is secluded enough. At the woods behind you, you got fresh water supply. You'll be safe here. Yeah, the trees and water will totally protect you from the armies out to kill us. Uh, look, what I'm really trying to say is can't get enough of that sugar crisps. Can never get enough. Dark ones, stay down. It's always good to have an inner monologue of the blitheringly obvious, isn't it? Stop appearing on camera. You're wasting time. Thanks. It's Sugar Bear and he's after my Sugar Crisp again. I can't get enough of that Sugar Crisp, Sugar Crisp, Sugar Crisp. Oh, he's coming. Where'll I hide my poor Sugar Crisp? <laughs> Sugar crisp equals not funny! She's in there. No guards, no armaments. Except for all the guards around with weapons in hand, but I'm just gonna walk right through in plain sight cause well that's the way this piss poor scene is written. No guards, no armaments. It was my hope to bring you back to our time myself. What, you mean the king who kills people for no reason and makes plagues with his alchemy is the bad guy? Holy shit. And it never occurred to you to uh, maybe say something to Lundgren while you were there? Raven. He released a plague which ran unrestrained through the kingdom, killing most with agonizing cruelty. The king before, his family, all were lost. And they made him king after that because... Um, I don't know, he's probably Farmer's nephew or something, so they had to. You are the king before's lost son. Ah, Dolph Lundgren was the son of Jason Statham, who was the son of Burt Reynolds. I totally see that one. We are family! Get up everybody and farm! You are our king. We traveled to the time beyond where I hid you in a place that welcomes lost children. Of course, I assume there was a good reason for that. Uh, understood. The warning came in my dreams. Visions of the attempt on your life and the time beyond. I myself ventured to your world to ensure that your life was not taken. And why send men to kill me? Why? Why did you send your men? I tasked one man to bring you back to me. The others, the dark ones who traveled with him, were under his command. Did your vision conveniently not tell you who was going to try and kill Lundgren? And why did you task that guy to go if you were going anyway? And it seems like Granny Goodwitch knew he betrayed her, but was just waiting for it to be dramatically convenient to reveal it. This is how you seek to avenge our fallen. By making peace with the tyrant that cast us out! What? She sent you out to kill everyone except Dolph Lundgren. How is that making peace? He and he alone. Do not fail me, Thane. And by the way, I know you've already tried to kill him, you know, since I was there, but I'll continue to give you orders and trust that you'll follow them correctly. Never! You mark my words, old woman. And why would you want to kill your real king? I'm pretty sure he's not particularly up for making peace with the murder of his family either. I have seen your passing, and it is near. As it is seen, so it shall pass. I swear your death shall be quick. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Keep me going, Tom. I have moments left in this life. Is there a way to get back to the time beyond? I have medicine that can save you. It is fate that I pass over from my own time. You keep talking about destiny, about fate. I don't believe in it. I believe we make our own destiny. I could see it no other way. What? Really? That's the best we could do? Sorry, it's a review on a direct video sequel. It's all the budget we had left. Right. Fate this, fate that! I don't believe in fate. Oh, neither do I! Why'd you keep talking about destiny deciding this or that? I have dreamt of the passing of your world, but I know not of how the sickness came to find your time. 
in this not knowing hides the dragon that shall slay the tyrant. Well, thank you. That doesn't answer your contradictory ways at all. I never asked you, why do they cover their faces? To honor the dead who have been taken from us by the plague. No, try again. So they'd seem more like bad guys first. That's more like it. And she dies from lack of sugar crisp he just wouldn't share. I am Dunyana, my lord. Yeah, a bit of an awkward time for introductions, isn't it? Our road becomes more treacherous with her passing. I'm sorry, but like my father before me, as king, there's gonna be stricter fire regulations. You shall enter the Black Forest and retrieve the catalyst. Which is what? I know not of its form. Well, you just go with the flow around here and hope not to get screwed, right? Screwed? Yeah. Your words. Yeah. <laughs> what news have you? They accompany him to the Black Forest. You are excused. Servant. That might have seemed really pointless to do, but sometimes you just gotta kill your informants to remind the audience that you're evil. And when this is over, who takes over the kingdom? As king without son, you select your rightful heir, my lord. You should be a righteous queen. No, my lord, I, I cannot accept this honor. You can and you will. I've decreed it. Hey, listen, guys. I've decreed it. Yeah, Super Double Dog decreed it even, so shove it up your ass. You just introduced woman, you'll be the best queen ever. The woods are haunted, my lord. <laughs> ah! The audience knows I'm evil now, so I can just be blatant sure, with it. And don't forget, killing your own men is always the best move. Increases morale and your numbers. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Hey Stan, what's happening? I'm stepping up security to keep that pesky sugar bear out. He eats that sugar crisp as fast as we can make it. Where was the kingdom of Ebb? Near Vancouver? Is that where dragons used to exist? I mean, putting them in a fantasy setting is one thing, but putting them in our past is another. Let's see if we can find some dragon bones. <laughs> Well, looks as real as the movies, so I guess CGI dragons did exist. After Lundgren updates Bland Rain on the scene she skipped, he asks how or why she is in the Black Forest before him on a sprained ankle. Oh wait, that question would only make sense, who cares? And luckily, getting a dragon stirred up is the catalyst. Yes, really. Probably could have used some clearer wording on that, or maybe Deddy the Powerful could have cleared it up, or is she on vacation now that she did her one useful deed? We're screwed. You are the true villain of this tale! Ha ha ha, I know! So now that Burger King can kill Lundgren like he probably should have just done in the first place, he instead opts to take him back to the castle. And on the way, he's like, oh wait, maybe I should kill them! What can Sugar Bear do against my magic? I'll turn him into glue. Can't get enough soup sugar crabs. Raven is making way to the portal. It looks like he's just going to his horse to me. Is someone reading ahead on the script again? Meanwhile, the dragon fucks shit up and the hoodsters get the plague that no one seems to actually be suffering from's cure. Yay. And now that King Dork's plan of whatever has fallen through, obviously his backup plan is to bring plague to the future. Cause, you know, that'll help him with becoming king and stuff. Well, Granny, it looks like old Mervyn will be tied up for a time. <laughs> we may see each other again. Nope! <laughs> Wait a second, there were dead guys left on the floor in Dolph's place. Did someone come by and clean them up? Oh, that Dolph left dead people on the floor again. That ragamuffin. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is always where I imagine the climactic battle of a medieval tale taking place in a rinky-dink kitchen. What was the matter, guys? The bathroom too classy for you? In the name of the bathroom! 
Anyway, Lundgren gives the king a swirly, and we learn the real name of the film. In the name of drowning the king in the toilet! All right, it was actually the bathtub, but I assume that shot was just an error because the toilet would have been more up this film's alley. And then Dolph decides he's got to go back to the past and rule his kingdom. Nah, just kidding, he decides he's got to get drunk. So yet again, lots of sleep acting, and Dolph was either already asleep during his role in this or in full no fucks mode, and he looked like he had just lost his yacht. The plot is a confused mess like usual, and there's so many characters who could have saved a lot of time and people being tricked if they'd just fucking said something. The time travel aspect to the story just seems slapped on as it serves no real purpose, and of course Burger King was a pathetic wiener boy as a king and a main villain. And that was in the name of the king too, and I guess there's nothing else to do. See you next time. Yep. Nothing else to do. The end. Yo, what are you doing? I told you to go back in time! Yeah, cause I know how to just do that. Alright, fine. Look, I'll lend you my time portal device. So that's how I got this? From myself? Yeah, good paradox, time lock. You know, I got a better idea. What? Oh boy! Aha! Ah, there! I fixed time by killing myself in the name of the Time Travel King! No, can't cancel that. That was stupid. I don't like this movie. There's a little too friendly. This monster seems so big. My nerves are gonna break. Failures don't let me down. You need to be around. Grab the running one up and blood I sing a new one. This movie the shit. We'll fail us, so fail us. Bring our boats are coming. We'll fail us, so fail us. And some of our run will be. We'll fail us, so fail us. I don't care about how you sound. We'll fail us, so fail us. What's your opinion about us? Curian. Hmm. Should I really review the Human Centipede 2 after that crap review? Or did I already do it? Aw, oh, clever! Nope, it's just me drowning another one of our future cells in the toilet. You never reviewed Human Centipede 2. <laughs> Destroying time is fun.